The new season opens with the narrator revealing that Froggy 2 has moved into Wang Ling's house since the Sunland incident. Yi Wang is currently building a problem to perfectly hide his abilities from the world. He has a little A, idol that helps him assess the program to make sure that it is right and ready to go. Later on he gets a text from Sun Rong, informing him that there is a text in school that day. She assures Wang that she is not going to tell anyone about his powers, since she is basically the only one who is not his family member who knows about it. As he is about to leave home, his father shows him a piece of equipment that has been designed to help him erase people's memories that have been gathered for the the past couple of minutes. In an attempt to show his son how it works, his father ends up wiping his own memories. When he comes to, he remembers trying to tell Wong about the equipment, and he is about to show him how he works again, but Wong stops him. He already knows how it will end, and he doesn't want to repeat. He collects the device and leaves the house as his father tells him to stay a bit far from the target before using the device. Soon afterward, Wong gets to school and this includes every other student in the school. He enters his class, and his friends tell him a piece of exciting news about the new teacher who is coming to teach them. Apparently, he is coming to teach them the physical arts. Moments later, one of their teachers, Pan, enters the class of elites which Wang belongs to. She formally tells them about the new teacher who is coming, and knows that they have been waiting for the commencement of this class for so long. Chen cannot hide his excitement as he stands up and shows off his strength before the teacher tells him to sit his ass down. However, all of the excitement comes washing down when the teacher tells them that the teacher who is supposed to come has come down sick. Due to this, they are to take a swordsmanship class instead of the physical art class. The teacher tells them that they are free to come to her office if they have anything to say or ask. Shortly afterward, the students gather in the gym in preparation for the swordsmanship class. The teacher enters the gym and decides to introduce them to the legendary sword immortal Fan Rui before the class begins. No one knows where Rui is, but it has been said that he has achieved the highest level of sword mastery, which is known as the Ways of Heaven swordsmanship. He tells the students that they are in luck because they are going to learn some sword skills, but he needs to show them something first. A book emerges behind him and tells them that it is known as the Wordless Book, which was bought from the Infinite Sword Faction. Some of the students are surprised to hear this because they actually believe that their faction is broke to afford such treasure. The teacher gets down to it and shows them how they are to use the book. He lets them know that they are going to know the level of swordsmanship that they can learn after using the book. As long as they follow his steps, they are not supposed to run into any problem. He starts calling out the students and the first guy he called upon ends up messing it up. He is very weak and doesn't have the ability to learn swordsmanship. After this, Chen is called on to check out his ability. He confidently walks up to the book and does as instructed, and everyone is impressed when they find out that he can learn the third phase of swordsmanship. They start talking about how powerful and impressive he is, and this makes him even more proud. It is now time for Wang to test out his ability, but before he does this, the teacher tells him that they have put an insurance policy in place to avoid him destroying the gym as usual. They have made the gym very strong and sturdy, and will with stand whatever craziness that Wong holds inside of him. Wong already has insurance in place to stop the book from finding out his real ability. However, this doesn't work as he expects it to, and the book ends up revealing that he can actually learn the highest level of swordsmanship. His ability is so impressive that it ends up ripping the gym apart. Wong fixes up the gym with his power and uses the memory wiping device that his father gave him to wipe everyone's memories clean. Rong is too close to the device and ends up getting stunned from the light, but the teacher tells Wong to rush her to the infirmary. The students and teacher are still shocked about how the gym came back to normal because they remember the gym getting destroyed. Meanwhile, there is an old man sitting in a cave and he sees this happen. This draws his attention and he prepares to find the person who is blessed with such an amazing power. It turns out that he needs an heir for the infinite sword faction. The old man is already dying and needs to get this done fast before his time runs out. In the next scene, the leadership of the Four Emblem faction is seen having a meeting. Ching Zhao is missing from the meeting because he is out there spreading the fame of the faction. On the other hand, Mr. Sun is concerned about the well-being of his granddaughter Rong. He asks the doctor to come over to check her out and see if there is anything wrong with her because she fainted in school. He already assumes that his granddaughter is cursed with an incurable disease, but the doctor tells him that Rong is perfectly fine. The doctor tells the old man that the girl is fine, and the reason she must have fainted might be due to psychological reasons. He then gives the old man a card to refer him to the Chrysanthemum Island Sanitarium if he still has doubts about his diagnosis. This is a sanitarium that his master just started and it provides medical services. However, the place is not fully developed because of funding. They are still looking for funding to properly keep the services running. Just then, 
they turn on the news to find out that a particular group has volunteered to provide funding for the sanitarium. Later on, Wong decides to check on Rong because he heard from his uncle that the lady is sick. He gets to the gate of the sanitarium, and a bot disinfects him as he steps into the compound. He is accompanied by Froggy too, and Rong is excited when he sees the two coming into the facility. Mr. Sun is urged by his assistant to listen in on the conversation that Rong and Wong are having, but he refuses to do this. The guy tells him it is important because they are alone in the room, but the old man refuses. Froggy too enters the room and tells the assistant that Wong is a good person who can be trusted. Unknown to them, the guy is in love with Rong, and this is the reason he is trying to get rid of Wong. Meanwhile, Rong and Wong are having an awkward moment inside the room. Rong was expecting Wong to bring her something, but it turns out that he came with what she is not expecting. The best thing he bought for her was a pack of noodles. Just then, one of the robots comes to inform Rong that it is time for her rehabilitation test. Wong decides to follow her to the test. The first she will be taking is the visual test, and Rong is glad that Wong is with her. It is time for her to use a button to try and direct the forklift to pick a froggy bear for herself, but she finds it difficult to do this, and when the results come in, she is informed that her performance is B+. Wong then decides to help out and see if he can get Rong a raccoon doll. The old man's assistant sees what Wong is about to do. He decides to make things hard for him and make him fail the test. He makes a quick text to whoever is in charge of the machine to make sure that they make Wang's life a living hell. Wang is about to use the device, but it starts acting out. However, this is not a problem for someone as powerful as Wang. He easily bends the device to his own will and obtains not just one doll, but multiple dolls, leaving Mr. Sun and the other guy in total shock. Wang's visual test flies through the roof, as he is even better than someone who scores an S+. Mr. Sun starts to boast that the boy is just like him when he was younger. After this, Wang and Rong move to the agility test. Wang is so powerful that he easily breaks the device, and his score could not even be calculated. Mr. Sun is impressed by this again, and talks about how Wang's hand speed is as fast as when he was young. It is time for the precision test, but the guy tells whoever is in charge to make it very hard for Wong to get something good out of it. However, this turns out to be quite a piece of cake for the guy as usual. He easily breaks the score limit, and Mr. Sun doesn't mind using the opportunity to compare Wong to his younger self. Meanwhile, Ching is currently taking the tests, and he is basically the one with the highest scores, but he is shocked to find his scores being shattered right in front of him. Wong easily breaks all the high scores and machines that are placed in front of him as a test without him even using 10% of his powers. After everything ends, Wong is giving a doll as a reward, but he decides to give the doll to Rong, and this makes her very happy. Later that day, Wong and Froggy 2 start returning to their home. Froggy 2 informs Wong about the presence of Ching and his possible desire to get vengeance for breaking all of his high scores, but Wong doesn't seem worried a bit. In the next scene, the Four Emblem faction are having their usual meeting, and Ching is absent again. Apparently, he has a mission to enact vengeance on Rong for disrespecting him, and he has promised to return to the faction after he is done. Later on, Teacher Pan and Teacher Kang are busy debating on how to get a physical art teacher for the student. When the old man enters the room and auditions for the job, they recognize the man as Sword Saint who is from the Infinite Sword faction, and he doesn't deny it. In fact, he shows them a bit of his strength. Teacher Kang asks the old man why he is thinking of accepting the teacher role, and he reveals that he is looking for his here and he believes that the right person is in fact Yin 60. Sword Saint, who is also known as Teacher Yi, is taken away from the office by Teacher Kang. After claiming that Teacher Pan is shrewd, Teacher Kang starts taking the old man around the school, and those in Wang's class deduce that the man is their new physical arts teacher. They wonder if he is up to the task of teaching them or not. Chen believes that the man is capable because there is the possibility that he is a hidden master. Wang's spirit sidekick tells him about Teacher Yi's intention of coming to the school, but Wang doesn't seem a bit worried. I'm bad at swordsmanship, he says. His spirit sidekick cannot believe what he just heard but keeps it to himself. Teacher Pan enters the classroom to tell them about the old man and she lets them know that it might take some time for the man to get to know all of them, which is pretty obvious as to why. Meanwhile, Wang figures out that Ching is on his way to the school to terminate Rong. Later on, Wang and his friends approach Teacher Yi at the school field. After greeting him, the students turn around and prepare to leave, but the man calls them back and shows them his strength. This causes a powerful airflow that pushes the students, except for Wang. He just stands there, unfazed like Thor. Chen and the other students present at the scene are impressed by what they see and how the man is able to channel his spirit air. Meanwhile, Ching is having some difficulties getting to the school because Wang has messed with his tracking device. 
Ching plans to deal with the lady for 49 days once he lays his hands on her. Soon afterward, the students in an attempt to get Teacher Pan to accept the old man, Wang, and his friends start going to her office to put several tasks on her. They ask her to organize a quiz for them, and once that is over, they find something else until she is exhausted. She tries locking herself in her office but Wang just blows out the door like it's nothing. They drag her out and make her take them on another class as usual. She gets so exhausted and frustrated that she has no choice but to tell them that she will be handing over the physical art class to the old man. With this, the students gather in preparation for their physical art class and the excitement can be seen on their faces. Teacher Yi tells them of his plans to make them learn several physical arts in the future as long as he is their teacher. For the first day of his class, he wants to get to know them first. To do this, he wants to test their powers. There are a bunch of balls in front of them and this is going to be used as a test subject for them. Each of the balls weighed 10 kilo each, and the students will be doing the solid ball throwing test. Chen asks the man why they are taking the test, and Teacher Yi lets him know that the test shows his core strength and flexibility. He throws the ball to Chen and tells him that he will be the first person to give it a try. He lets them know that any student who is able to throw above 80 meters at the foundation level is considered a success. Chen grabs the ball and throws it past the 100 meters threshold, which gives him the A grade. It is Wang's turn, and Wang is confident that he will do well in the test. To make the test a little bit harder for him, Wang uses his power to increase the weight of the ball before throwing it. Meanwhile, Ching is already approaching the school after he has circled the town several times. When the ball that Wang throws lands, it doesn't get past 50 meters, and Teacher Yi considers him a failure. Even Rong is surprised by this and wonders what happened to Wang. Unknown to them, the ball has gone around the world in a split second, and Wang has even used the opportunity to terminate Ching who was already approaching the school. Later on, Teacher Yi tells Teacher Kang that he didn't expect Wang to fail the test, but he will continue to test them. In addition, he was aware that Ching was coming to the school, but he had not seen him. He had no idea that Wang had taken care of the threat already. Soon afterward, it is heard on the news that Ching has been apprehended by the cops. The news reaches the Four Emblem faction, and it dawns on them that Ching is now absent forever. They are vexed to hear this and they decide to avenge their fallen comrade. They all swore to enact vengeance on the Faction 60 for what happened to Ching. Meanwhile, Wang is building spiritual veins underground using his powers. Upon getting to class, Teacher Kong tells them about the spiritual veins and their usefulness. He then tells them that it is practically impossible for humans to create spiritual veins because there is no way for them to implant the roots so deep. This comes as a laugh and surprise to Wang, who literally just did that before leaving his house, and he even did it like it was nothing. Suddenly, it starts to snow, and it is not supposed to be, because they are in June which is not the season. It turns out that the person who made the snow appear is Teacher Yi, and this is one of his plans to find an heir. He believes that whoever is capable of being his heir will stop the snow. He then assures Teacher Kang that he will put a stop to the snow if the said heir doesn't later show up. He won't stand by and put the students in danger, he assures Kang. Kang wants to know why Teacher Yi is in a hurry to get an heir, but he chooses not to reveal his reason. Moments later, Wang steps outside, and he is about to handle the situation when Chen and Guo show up. They plan to have fun by throwing snowballs at Wang to see how many he will be able to dodge. Wang is already dodging everything efficiently, till his spirit sidekick informs him that someone is staring at them, and they will get suspicious if none of the balls touch Wang. Wang then intentionally lets himself be hit in the head by one of the balls. Rong and her friend show up to help Wong, and it soon escalates to full-blown fun between the two groups. Teacher Yi is watching all of these, but all he can see is the students having fun, and this makes him miss his young age. As time goes on, everything starts getting colder. Teacher Pan is worried when it gets to this stage, but Teacher Kang assures her that everything will be fine because Teacher will handle it before it gets any worse. He further adds that he will take care of the problem by himself if Teacher Yi fails to. Since he hasn't found his heir yet, Teacher Kang believes that the man is in the wrong faction. Teacher Yi and Teacher Pan want to believe that Rong is the heir, but she is not talented enough for them. They waste no time in using this moment to make fun of Wang because they know that he cannot be the heir. Later on, everything starts to freeze up in the school, and touching the door handle even feels like a hassle. Chen gets the idea to use his fireball, and he decides to step into the limelight. He starts chanting and making preparations for this, but when the fire comes out, it is disappointing to see. The flame is so tiny, and it looks like that of a matchstick. 
His friends make fun of him, but they are shocked to find out that they are all suffering from the same fate. They deduce that their art power is getting weaker, and this is as a result of the snowstorm outside. It is easy to figure out that the faction's spiritual veins are getting damaged, and the question of how to fix it comes up. Lin gets affected by the cold and wrong, secretly wishes that Wong will do something about the cold, using his powers. Meanwhile, there is a white-haired man, who is outside the school causing damage to the spiritual veins, claiming that the faction is not worthy of having spiritual veins. Apparently, the man is from the Four Emblem faction, and he is there to avenge Ching. The entire school has been thrown into chaos and disaster. Lin is getting worse because she doesn't like the cold. Wong finds the guy who is responsible for this, and he challenges him. The guy doesn't seem worried when he sees Wong, but he soon realizes that he is in trouble when Wong easily pulls out his sword from the ground. Wong throws him into the air without much stress and shows him what it means to be powerful. After this, Wong easily reverses the damage that has been done to the school and everything returns to normal. Teacher Yi was unable to see this and he started to wonder who put a handle on the situation. Master Zhuo is having a press conference when the white-haired guy is thrown into the building. He is one of the most wanted men out there, and this counts as another success for the authorities, even though they had no hand in defeating the guy. Later on, Zhuo's assistant informs him of the latest update. He has been put on the wanted list by the four emblem factions for claiming the glory of arresting and defeating one of their own. He starts to shake and sweat when he realizes that some mercenaries have taken up the task of terminating him. He doesn't want to show this when his assistant is in the room, but as soon as she leaves, he cries out in pain. Elsewhere, Wang goes out with his friends to the cultivation mall. His friends are excited with everything that they are seeing, but Wong just acts normal, like he usually does. They start going around trying to get a feel of the mail. They try looking at everything, and this includes the things that their money cannot even buy. Suddenly, Wang starts to get the urge to buy the magic wares that they have come across. In fact, all the magic wares are begging the guy to buy them. They try to tell him their usefulness and how they can make him happy. Wang then uses his power to mess with the magic wares, causing the salesgirl to scream out in pain. The boss of the establishment sees what is happening and decides to mess with Wang and his friends. Since he cannot go after Zhuo, he can just deal with his juniors. He tells his people to tease them and make them expend all of their spiritual coins in the mall. The manager wasted no time in getting in on this. Chen is the dumbest, and he is the one who starts falling for the trick first. He sees a virtual device that he likes, but it is expensive. He is about to give up on it when the manager tells him that he doesn't need to. He assures him that they offer spiritual coin advancement, and he can simply use this offer. Whatever spiritual coin he gets in the future will be transferred to them, which means all he needs to do is cultivate harder. Guo joins Chen and starts falling for the guy's sweet talks. They are even told that they don't need to pay once, which means installment payments are allowed. Rong and Wang get to the scene and discover what the dumb Chen and his friend are about to do. Rong stops them and offers to pay, but the manager says this isn't allowed for reasons that cannot be disclosed until the deal is over. Wang's spiritual guy tells him that what is currently happening is planned. They are trying to get Guo and Chen to sign the contract by all means so that they can have a hold over them, he says. Wang then decides to step in. He shows the guy a pamphlet that reveals that they are running a discount that day. The guy accepts this fact and tells the terms and conditions for the discount. He brings out a machine for this and shows them how it works. There are several balls inside the device and the gold ball provides the best discount offer for them. He tells Wong to give it a try, and he knows that there is no way someone will get the golden ball because there are thousands of other balls inside the device. Wong happily accepts the terms, and he gets down to work. He simply uses his power to spin the device and spills out the golden ball, which leaves the manager in the biggest shock of his life. Guo and Chen are happy when this happens, and they start hugging Wang. They thank him and call him a hero for saving them. However, the manager decides to play funny. He tells them that there is a rule that he didn't mention before. He says they need to get the golden ball twice to get access to the discount. Wang already sees this coming, so he doesn't even argue with him. He spins the device and gets the golden ball again. This leaves the guy in total shock, and lies again that Wang needs to get it three times. Wang spins it and gets the ball the third time, leaving the manager no lies to tell again. The manager finally gives up and tells them that they have the option to level up the coupon if they manage to win two rubies in the device. However, they lose everything if they fail to win the rubies. Wang spins the device and gets the rubies, leaving the manager in total distraught. Wang's friends cannot hold their happiness as they worship him like he is a divine being. 
Wang ends up getting his friends everything that they need, without paying a dime. The owner is pissed when he sees this, and wonders how the top salesman in the establishment is messing up. The manager gives Wang a noodle pack as farewell, but Wang shows him a get one free coupon inside the coupon, forcing the guy to give him another pack. He continues doing this till there is no more noodle pack on the rack. The manager gives up on his job and leaves after going through all of this. The owner of the establishment also faints after his heart can no longer hold the heartbreak that just struck him. On their way home, Wang's friends decide to organize a charity because of everything that they have won, and Wang agrees to this also. Later on, Zhuo receives a limited edition book that was sent from Wang and this is one of the things he won at the mall. In the next scene, we see the Way of Heaven Elves doing their thing behind the scenes as usual. They soon receive new visitors in the persons of Qing and his other friend Xue. Without further investigations, they deduce that it was Wang who dealt with the two. When they ask their boss what to do with the two, he tells them to pass the two on to where they are going to suffer and know the consequences of their actions. They are surprised that the number of cultivators who are seeking the way of heaven has surprisingly skyrocketed. The boss tells everyone to get even more serious with their job because they cannot allow cultivators to learn the way of heaven. Moments later, the number two heir of the Infinite Sword faction, Chen Nanchuan, is seen trying to reach the way of heaven. He is strong enough and would have learned it but he is rejected because he disrespected his master. They send him back as he is about to reach the peak of the way. He returns to his body and the fact that he is about to get to the top keeps him motivated. He plans to get to the top in order to become the heir and spite his brother, who has little time left on Earth. Elsewhere, the Four Emblem faction are in Chaos because they have lost yet another member of the group, and they start wondering why. It is so hard for them to defeat Faction 60. They think about involving their master, but they do not want to do this at the same time. They believe that Faction 60 is a clan that they should be able to handle by themselves. They realize that they have another brother, whose whereabouts are unknown, but he is powerful and he should be able to handle Faction 60. However, they do not want to give the task to this brother just yet. Ju offers to handle the situation. He has received a message that Faction 60 will be holding a charity sale the next day, and he can easily use this to showcase himself and tear the clan apart. He relies on his divine flame to do the job for him. At the school, Teacher Pan tells the students about the charity that will be held the next day, and she tells them to prepare themselves. That night, Froggy Tu asks Wang what his plans are for the charity. Meanwhile, Nanchuan is still attempting to climb the ladder of the mind and he is now close to his 7,000 attempt. Froggy 2 sees Wong opening up his closet and wonders what he is hiding inside of there. Wong tells the dog that he is free to come with him. He opens the closet and they find themselves in the way of heaven's face. Froggy 2 doesn't want to believe what he is seeing until the seven leaders of the way of heaven come out to greet the guy and they even bow to him. Froggy 2 is totally blown away when he sees this and he starts to wonder just how powerful the guy is. One of the guys who just started working wonders why the leaders are bowing to Wong, and his comrade tells him that Wong is the only person who is on their whitelist. Froggy 2 hears this, and he is gripped with shock again. He lets it out that he is glad about the fact that he is Wong's dog. It turns out that Wong is there to make exchanges with the guys. He gives them a pack of noodles and wants something in return. He even gets to pick out the numerous things that are presented to him by the elves. Wong sees what he seems is best for him, and that is the amiableness pill, which increases spiritual force permanently, but this is not guaranteed to work, because everyone's cultivation is different. Wong would have loved to pick the pill, but he remembers what his parents told him about not abusing his powers. He tries to do things fair and well. The selection process continues, but it doesn't seem Wong is going to see something that he likes anytime soon. While the elves are busy with Wong, Chen uses this opportunity to get close to the end of the ladder and comes across the best opportunity he has to learn the way of heaven. Froggy too then asks the Red Leader why Wang loves crispy noodles so much. Apparently the Red Leader once found himself inside Wang's room and he saw a painting that he loves. He then makes an exchange of crispy noodles with him because he was just three years old. In addition to this, he adds Wang to the white list because he believes that Wang would never find him with the level of cultivation that he has. Apparently, everything happening is the Red Leader's fault. Moments later, Wang finally comes across what he likes, but by this time, Chen has learned the way of heaven already, and he is ready to go after his brother. Up next, Zhu starts to prepare to go after the Faction 60 in an attempt to destroy them. Meanwhile, Huang has come to the headquarters of the Four Emblem Faction, but there is no one home. He easily walks into the headquarters and does what he likes. He even has the time to stay there and try to search for the location of the faction members. At Wang's school, they are preparing for the charity, and Chen shows them that he brought his father's broadsword along with him. They ask him if his father will not be angry because of this, and he says no. 
He already asked for permission from his father concerning this. Since they forge new swords at their home, everything should be fine. Everyone else starts to show off what they have prepared for the charity, and when it is Wang's turn to show what he has with him, he just sits there like a dead person. Rong and her friends start to think about what Wang can actually prepare. They wonder if it is something crazy, but they don't want to think about this because they are not mentally prepared for whatever Wang has in store for them. After so much pressure, Wong finally brings out what he prepared, and this is a rice cooker, leaving his friends in total confusion. Shortly afterward, the event begins, and the students start to show off the amazing things that they have in store. One of Guo's magic wares gave birth to kittens that he and his friends started to play with. While they are doing this, Zhu is already approaching the school gate, and he is dressed like one of the school students. He enters the school gate without any restriction, and this comes as a surprise to him. He is happy that the faction's security is so low, but starts to wonder how Ching and Shui were eliminated by the faction. He is suddenly caught by surprise when Teacher Pan shows up, asking him what class he is in. He lies that he is a regular student, and the woman demands that he provide his name. She is asking for his name, because he is dressed in such a bad way, and his hair color and cut are also bad. Ju thinks of what to do, and quickly bows to the lady, to try and get him off his back. This seems to work as Teacher Pan decides to let him go, with a warning because of his humility. She instructs him to cut his hair, and also fix the color before tomorrow, if he doesn't want his name to be recorded. And Ju agrees to do this. Once there is an agreement, Teacher Pan leaves. In reality, Ju was trembling in front of the lady because he had always been scared of instructors. This makes him even madder and more eager to take down the faction. He creates a powerful fiery spell and lets it loose in an attempt to bury the faction under a flood of flames. However, Wang gets a hold of this and destroys the attacks before they even get the chance to hit the school. Chen starts to complain that Wang is not showing enthusiasm about selling what he brought, but Guo reminds him that talking is a big problem for the guy, not to talk about showing enthusiasm. Zhu soon finds out that his flames have disappeared, which leaves him shocked because the attack is supposed to be on stealth mode before it hits the target. He decides to release another wave of attack, but this disappears just like the first one. He decides to use another trick to destroy the faction. He creates a massive level of explosion and keeps it inside a rice cooker, which he gently places among the items that are for sale. This blends in perfectly, and he knows that once someone touches it, the entire school will be leveled. Wong knows this, and he simply takes control of the rice. He takes the rice cooker and inserts it inside the rice that he brought to school. He then informs Zhuo of where Zhu is. Zhuo appears behind Zhu, but Zhu is not the one to go down without a fight. He tries to attack Zhuo but all of his attacks fail to penetrate because of the kind of armor that he is wearing. He ends up losing to Zhuo while Wong sells his rice cooker to Rong. Wong ends up winning the charity after Rong bought the rice cooker with the intention of using the flames inside as rocket fuel. When Wang is asked for the reward that he wants, he simply tells the teachers that all he needs is a pack of crispy noodles. Continuing with the story, a guy is seen carrying Ching's core in his hand like a lamp. Fortunately for Ching, this guy was able to find his core, and preparations are underway to restore him to his normal body. Zhu and Zhuo are not so lucky like him. Ching leads the guy to a place where he claims to hold the power to turn things around in their faction. This is a secret that their master left before going into seclusion, he says. They get to a door and knock on it. A man shows up and hands over a legendary core to them. The guy and Ching gladly take the core and their excitement that the faction is about to return to its rightful place among other factions. Just as they leave the place, Wang shows up and it seems he knows the same man the two just traded with. However, Wang is not there for anything serious. He just wants a pack of crispy noodles and the merchant hands this over to him very fast. Soon afterward, Zhuo learns that the Four Emblem is making a move and he informs his boss about this. Zhuo is praised for defeating Zhu but his boss tells him that he needs to get a fix on the rising of the Four Emblem faction. In addition, it has been said that they have a trick at hand which will supposedly help them. Zhuo is ready to do whatever is in his power to stop the faction. Later on, Teacher Pan, Teacher Kang, and Teacher Yi sit down to have a talk concerning the mobilization of the Four Emblem faction. Teacher Kang informs his comrades that the Four Emblem faction is coming in full force, and this is enough to put fear in Teacher Pan's mind. Teacher Pan suggests that they send the kids home, but Teacher Yi is against this. He lets her know that sending the kids home will further boost the enemy's morale. In addition, he will be ashamed of himself as being the sword saint if he fails to protect the school. Teacher Yi uses his spiritual energy to make himself look young again, and this shows that he is fully prepared for whatever the Four Emblem faction might bring to them. 
The faction master is also in support of this. He says the students are supposed to experience some hard battles to prepare them for the future. He considers this a drill for the students, and is also relieved that the sword saint is with them because this goes a long way. Later on, Teacher Pan informs the students that the Four Emblem faction has challenged them to war. This is very unlikely because Faction 60 is a low-level faction that shouldn't pose a threat to a big faction as the Four Emblem faction. Teacher Pan tells the students that she will be teaching them defensive skills for the class that day. Meanwhile, the person who was holding Ching's core turns out to be Xiong, and he is in the desert now. He uses the newly found power to create hundreds of figurines in preparation for battle. He is rest assured that he is going to win, because the odds are simply in his favor. This amount of energy sends a signal to the immortal core, and Zhuo is contacted with respect to this. He tells them that there is nothing that can be done about the war that is about to happen, because it is a formal challenge between two clans. However, he has been given special instruction to intervene because the Four Emblem faction is evil and they need to stop. Surprisingly, other factions start to swear allegiance to Faction 60 for one reason or the other. Some are supporting them because they want to be friends with Zhuo while some have other reasons. That night, Teacher Kang tells the students that in all his years of teaching, he has never seen other factions helping them. This is a surprise and also a good thing. He then tells them that it is time for them to put everything that they have learned into practice. The students start to create a protective shield around the school. Wang leaves the scene when this is happening, and he can clearly see the invaders as they approach the school. The invaders begin to attack the school but the shield holds out. Rong is scared and worried about Wang but her friends assure her that Wang will be fine. Just then, Froggy 2 shows up with other dogs to defend the faction because he now considers himself a member of the faction. Xiong stands tall in the air, talking about how Faction 60 is low. Teacher Yi shows up and tells the guy to stop what he is trying to do. Xiong makes fun of the old man and lets him know that there is no way he is stopping him. He is too powerful to be stopped, he says. Just then, Wang decides to step in. With one spell, he destroys all of the invaders and sacks Xiong of his power, which leaves the guy in total surprise. Xiong is exhausted, and he falls to the ground like a dead man. Teacher Kang runs over and starts to praise Teacher Yi for defeating the bad, but Teacher Yi knows that he is not responsible for the defeat of the guy. He looks back to try and see who defeated Zhang in one go. Soon afterward, Zhuo sends his assistant and other core members to the headquarters of the Four Emblem faction to arrest the remaining members and seal the place down. There are no members at the headquarters, but it is sealed and Zhuo is giving the live report of everything that is happening. He can now be rest assured that the Four Emblem faction is in decline. Suddenly, he loses contact with the group at the headquarters. It turns out that someone just wiggled his way out of the ground below the headquarters of the faction. Apparently, there are more than four cultivators in the Four Emblem faction. This said person is Nan Shuan. Up next, Rong makes her way to the bank where her family vault is located. She is welcomed by the manager of the bank and treated exclusively. She is taken to where her family vault is located and she is impressed with the security of the vaults and the bank in general. She is led deeper into the vault room and shown how to access the vault and what is needed to unlock it. They finally make it to the main storage room of the vault and the manager asks her what she has come to keep safe in the vault. The manager is thrown into total shock when he realizes that she is there to keep a pack of crispy noodles inside the vault and lock it up. As if this is not enough madness, her grandfather enters the room and tells the manager that he has come to deposit his granddaughter in insurance for three days. There is a furnace in the room, and he wants them to keep her in the furnace while also watching her. Later on, it is revealed that the old man actually got a letter informing him that Rong will be terminated in the next three days by midnight. This is the reason he has taken this drastic measure, and all of this is happening in relation to Huang. The news and media get a hold of this story, and they make it the topic of the day. They talk about how powerful he has become while he is busy absorbing spiritual energy in the underground. Huang is known as a master thief, and all of this contributes to the reason why Mr. Sun is being extremely careful in dealing with him. Later on, Rong's friends visit Mr. Sun in his residence and they talk about how locking Rong away provides no solution to the problem. Mr. Sun then tells Rong's friends that they are not allowed to visit Rong because Huang has been known to change his appearance. Mr. Sun wants to keep his daughter locked in there till the time frame passes. He then tells them that there is a way that they can speak to Rong. Apparently, there is a video connection to the furnace where Rong is staying. She can see them, and this goes both ways. The inside of the furnace looks exactly like her bedroom at home, and this is because her grandfather specifically directed them to make the room like that. Rong tells them that she has lots of food to eat, and these are all provided by her grandfather. Chen is just impressed that there is Wi-Fi in the room, 
this would have been his target, assuming he was the one inside the furnace. It is now two hours before the threat is to manifest. The entire bank is crawling with cops and other security agencies. The reporters are also there, giving those who are at home updates about the entire thing. Zhuo is also present at the bank, and he starts heading toward the main vault. He tells everyone present to work ahead. Wang starts looking for Rong's room, and he and Froggy too finally find a neat room, but the occupant is not home. Meanwhile, Rong has fallen into a spiritual hole in the floor, and she comes face to face with Huang. It turns out that Huang has been moving around using different faces. He has finally been able to get Rong in the same room with him. Even the room is created by Huang and this shows how much power he has. Rong is in danger but Wang steps in. Wang tells her to eat the crispy noodles which she does, and this grants Wang the ability to share his spiritual energy with Rong. Huang is shocked when he sees this, and all he can say is, impossible. Even Rong herself is shocked to see this, the amount of energy flowing through her body makes her feel on top of the world. She asks Wang just how much energy he gave her, and his reply blows her mind away. He reveals that the spiritual energy flowing through is just one-tenth of a billionth of the energy she has. Wang is done talking, and he attacks first, but Rong easily cuts off his attack, leaving him more surprised as to how this is possible. In the outside world, the people have started panicking that Rong has been kidnapped because of the power outage. Just then, the power comes back on, and they can see Rong on the screen, talking to them. However, Chen notices that there is something off about the Rong who is talking to them. On the other hand, Zhuo gets a call from his boss, thanking him for stopping Huang. Zhuo tries to let his boss know that all of this is not from him, but the man will not just stop talking. The man ends the call by telling Zhuo that he will be expecting good news about where Huang is from him. Just as the call ends, Senior Jing shows up to update Zhuo. He tells him that Wang is currently supervising the fight between Huang and Rong, which means the person on screen is not Rong, but Froggy too. He tells him to coordinate his people to the location where they are to arrest Huang, because the battle will be ending in three minutes. It is then revealed that Froggy too has the power of transfiguration, and combined with Wang's spiritual energy, he is able to portray himself as Rong for a longer time than usual. Continuing with the battle with Huang, he deduces that the noodle pack that Rong ate is what is powering her up, and she will soon lose that power. But Rong shows him how wrong he is when she charges toward him at blinding speed and knocks him to the ground, even though he tries to create a shield for that. In real life, Teacher Yi possesses a smaller version of the wordless book and he can actually use this to track down Huang. Anyone who has fought him before can be tracked by the book. He sees Huang as a promising cultivator, who would have been among the contestants to replace him if he had not gone evil. Teacher Yi then activates the book, and this displays an animated image of Huang for everyone to see on their screen. They can see how Huang is getting beaten up by an unknown person who they believe is there to save Rong. Everyone wants to know who the person is. It is said that the master and creator of a spiritual space holds all the key to everything that happens in that space, which makes the person beating Huang up a powerful being. He is not supposed to have the will to even be able to move in another person's spiritual space, but he is doing just that and freely too. Lord Thunder and Teacher Kang are the two who are talking about this, and Lord Thunder once remembers Wang breaking an ancient seal very easily. He starts to suspect Wang, but he doesn't have proof yet about his deductions. Moments later, Huang gets some strength, and he starts to put up a fight. He tells Rong that she will have to terminate him, if she is ever going to have the chance to leave the spiritual space, but Wang tells Rong not to worry about this because he is only messing with her, and Wang says she knows this. The two start to hit each other, and Huang is basically using all of his strength, while Rong is making things look too easy. Huang soon gets very desperate, and he employs one of his most deadly moves, causing Rong to gasp for the first time. Rong asks Wang what she is to do, and he tells her to just continue with what she is doing, and also apply what she has learned before. Huang charges toward her, but she easily counters with successive blows that send Huang flying out of his spiritual space into the real world where he is then arrested. Rong and Wang return to real life too, but Teacher Yi is already on his way, because he has found the heir he has been looking for. Wang and Rong are discussing on the rooftop when Wang senses Yi's presence and quickly disappears, leaving Yi to believe that Rong is the all-powerful person who fought Huang. Rong tries to tell the old man that he is mistaken, 
but he is not ready to accept that. Rong then asks him if he wants her to become his disciple, but Yi says no. He believes that Rong is too powerful to be his disciple. Instead, he bows to her and asks her to become the leader of the Infinite Sword faction. This leaves Rong in total shock and she screams out because of this. A quick flashback scene reveals that the mobile team, who went to the Four Emblem faction, has been captured and interrogated by the guy who just arose from the depths of the building. He has the power that allows him to control his target and get them to do whatever he wants. Continuing with the story, Wong and his friends are seen training in the gym. Chen notices that Rong has been taking leaves from the school and wonders what she is up to, but the teacher tells him to focus. Chen tries grabbing Wong and slamming him to the floor, but he finds this hard to do. Wong looks so frail, but he is at the same time very heavy. To avoid suspicions, Wong allows himself to be thrown to the floor, and this provides Chen some sort of security. Lin wonders if Wong is just a born actor, or if he learned the act. On the other hand, Yi is seen visiting the son's residence, and he is there to ask Rong's grandfather to give him his daughter, so she can take charge of the infinite sword faction. Mr. Sun laughs at this and says Yi actually thinks highly of his daughter, whom he perceives as weak. Yi tells the man that Rong was the one who defeated Huang, but this makes the man laugh even harder. Mr. Sun then gets serious with the man, asking him if he is trying to put his granddaughter in danger, but Yi says no. Yi tries to convince the man by telling him that his granddaughter is actually a genius. When it is time to leave, Rong gives the old man a theater ticket and tells him to show up. She tells the man that she is not fit to lead the Infinite Sword faction, and she hopes that the man sees this anytime soon. Now in Wang's house, his parents tell him to stay home while they visit the hospital for a checkup. After they leave, Wong creates something which is a gift for Froggy too. Bro just casually created a demon world from his room. He has searched for a place suitable for demons in the galaxy and has found none. This is the reason he opts to create one by himself and give it to Froggy too to settle in there. Soon after, word Zhuo and all of Wang's friends gather at the library. His friends start to wonder where he is, but Zhuo tells them that he is inside already. Lin wonders what Wang is about to do, and she asks Rong about this, but she simply tells her to stay calm and wait till they get inside. Just then, a rune appears in front of them, and this opens an arbitrary door that only powerful cultivators can only open. Meanwhile, Wong is still busy refining the new demon world that he has created for Froggy 2. He shows Froggy 2, his workbench, and how he gets things done in the world. He simply creates them, and the heavenly elves put the final touch. The world is so beautiful and amazing to see. Jing informs him that Chen and the others are already approaching, and Wong suggests that they meet them halfway. Wong's friends enter into the demon world, and they are absolutely blown away by how amazing everything is. They start to wonder who the creator is, and Zhuo tells them to wait and see. Just then, Wong comes riding on one of the creatures in the world. His friends waste no time in jumping on the creature and riding away. Wong then summons Slime to carry both him and Rong. Rong has missed Slime, and this proves to be bliss for her. The two ride away and Teacher Yi also enters into the world and Zhuo welcomes him. On the other hand, Nanchuan has finished interrogating one of the members of the Immortal Corps that he captured. He has been fed information that Rong is responsible for the destruction of the Four Emblem faction. He immediately gets into action, tracking down Rong and her aura. He traces Rong's aura to the demon world where Wang and his friends are currently in. He comes face to face with his brother, Yi, and Tenshin Arises between the two. He has learned the way of heaven so he is pretty confident that he can take on his old brother. He releases a surge of power from his body, and everyone can clearly see that he is not to be taken as a joke. He and Yi go against each other, but Yi starts to see himself failing, because the guy has already learned the way of heaven. Wong then releases a blast of energy from his energy, that sends everything into absolute ruin. The energy blast leaves Yi panting hard and this makes Nanchuan laugh. He tells Yi that he has not even used 10% of the power he now has and Yi is already panting. Yi then decides to give it his all since he is going against an ultimate power. He uses his body fluid to taint his sword and this gives him a combination of heaven and earth. He is able to create something amazing and powerful, but Nanchuan still doesn't seem concerned. Meanwhile, Wong tells Rong that the two are unable to see them because he has used an invincibility art to keep them hidden. Just then, Nanchuan activates his dark powers, and this causes Wong's friends to start crying and thinking about their lives. This is happening because Nanchuan's powers give off sad emotions and cause people to be sad. Wong realizes that things are getting out of hand, and he just uses a purification spell to clear away the sad aura. Nanchuan releases his power onto Yi with the belief that he is going to die from that but he is shocked to find out that Yi is even more powerful than he knows. 
He has also learned the way of the earth, which makes him even more dangerous. This is almost corresponding to the way of heaven, and Yi plans to terminate his brother with this. His brother has done lots of bad things, and this includes the atrocities he has committed against their master. A flashback scene shows Nanshuan asking their master why he chose Yi as his heir when he was the one who came first in the tournament. The master tells him that there are things he doesn't know, and he just needs to continue on the right path, which will eventually lead him to the way of heaven. The master shows him a clip of the competition he has with his brother. It is glaring that his brother has no intentions of competing with him, but Nanshuan makes everything about competition and success. Everything he has been shown doesn't seem to be enough to convince Nanshuan, and he ends up pushing their master into the bottomless pit below them. Now in the present day, Nanshuan reveals his strong desire to see if Yi's Sword of Earth is the best or if his own Sword of Heaven is superior. Nanshuan releases a large burst of energy that consumes everything that Yi has. He is ready to terminate Yi, but Yi wants to take Nanshuan down with him to prevent him from hurting the world further. He is about to overpower Yi, but Wang uses one of his art to suck up Nanshuan's art. While all of this is happening, Chen and Guo believe that they are watching a realistic animation movie. Wang realizes that Nanshuan is already getting out of hand and he decides to step in. He appears beside Yi, leaving the old man confused. He doesn't want to believe that Wang is the powerful person who has been doing all the amazing things he has seen so far. Nanshuan tries to attack them, but Wang just nullifies his attack like it's nothing. Nanshuan doesn't want to believe this, and he tries another attack, but the result remains the same. Nanshuan finds it hard to believe that there is someone who is more powerful than him. Wang then unveils a seal that can only be achieved after learning 3,000 ways of heaven. He uses this to order the elves to take Nanshuan's power away. After this is done, he simply tells Zhuo to arrest the guy, which he does immediately. Yi remains surprised and says he had no idea that there is someone as powerful as Wang. He then asks him if he will be willing to lead their faction, but Wang says he is not good enough. Yi plans to use the remaining life he has to repair the demon world and die there, because he is out of time already. Wang brings out his workbench and adds 500 years more to Yi's life telling him to continue searching for the rightful heir. Yi thanks Wang for his help and asks him what art sword he used. Wang says he will teach him that later on. Chen and Guo join them on the scene, and the two continue talking about how realistic everything is. Chen's dumbness has affected Guo, that he also cannot figure out that everything they just witnessed is not a movie. The two even go as far as to ask Yi for his autograph, which he gives them after Wang gives him the permission to do so. Two months later, Wang's father is informed that his wife is pregnant. Wang's father is thrown into total confusion as he wonders if the world is ready for another shock. 